Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the Foolish Engineer channel. We all know the first law of thermodynamics, also known as the law of conservation of energy, which says energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. It can only be transferred to another form of energy. With that being said, every system works like that. In the case of electric vehicles, it works the same. And that's how we'll start our understanding of EVs in this session. So buckle up guys and we'll check it out. There are three main systems in the electric vehicles which play a very significant role. Which are motor, motor controller and battery pack. But apart from the systems, we have electric vehicle charger, battery management system and auxiliary systems for driving control units. We'll see the significance of each of these systems one by one. First, we'll start with the motor. If we are considering an electric vehicle, then a basic and most important requirement is it should move, right? I mean, it is by default. To do that, we need a mechanical energy which will rotate the wheels. In electric vehicles, that job is done by a motor. Basically, a motor converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. As electrical energy is provided to the motor, it converts it into mechanical energy by rotating the rotor of motor. From the motor through drive train, we transfer this motion to the wheels and vehicle moves. Motors work either on AC or DC power supply and there are several advantages and types of both AC and DC motors which actually make a significant difference for the selection of any application. For this, we actually need to compare these AC and DC motors and that part will skip for now. Don't worry, we will cover all those topics in the future sessions. Well, just driving a motor is not sufficient. The control is also important. Just give the supply and play is not what we want. Rather, we should be able to control the speed and power of the motor, which we should change according to our requirements. Now, to control these things, a motor driver or a motor controller should be used. Where we use different power electronics topologies to achieve this. Now you might have heard the term regenerative braking. In regenerative braking, the kinetic energy of the wheels is converted into electrical energy. And that energy is fed back to the battery to charge them up again. Here the motor acts as a generator, generating AC power which is converted by the motor controller into DC power. And this DC power is given to the battery pack again. Hence, the motor controller acts as a bidirectional converter. That is, it converts DC power into AC to drive the motor and it converts AC power into DC again to charge the battery pack. This is one of the biggest advantages of the motor controller. Now, we need to provide energy to drive these motors. So for that purpose, we use a battery which stores DC power. But before storing, we need to replenish or refill the energy into the battery pack. And that energy is in the form of electricity which will come from the grid. However, we get AC that is alternating current supply on the transmission line from the grid. And we cannot store AC electrical energy into the batteries. That's where the electric vehicle charger comes into picture. The charger basically converts AC power into DC, which we are able to store into battery pack. These chargers are of two types. First is the onboard charger and second are the offboard chargers. As name suggests, onboard chargers are the part of the electric vehicle system. That means they are present in the vehicle itself. The offboard chargers on the other hand are out of the vehicle. Whole system is situated 
outside the vehicle and we can charge. Before the charger, a device is present which is known as EVSE, that is Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. It is a reliable approach for safe and smart connection between vehicle and the grid. Many of us also know it as a wall mount charger. Well, to know more about this, you can check out this video regarding the charging of electric vehicles. But guys, now the charging of electric vehicle batteries is not that straightforward. We need to monitor the state of charge and the health condition of the battery pack continuously in order to charge the batteries efficiently and not to let them overcharge or deep discharge. The battery pack is made up of small lithium ion cells which are connected in parallel and series combination as per voltage and ampere hour requirements of the battery pack. Hence to manage all these activities a battery management system is required. The battery management system also known as a BMS communicates with the charger and provides necessary commands in order to charge the battery pack efficiently. When the battery packs are charged with DC fast chargers or when the vehicle is driving at very peak power then the load on the battery pack increases tremendously and they produce heat. This heat can cause a fire in the battery pack. Hence to avoid such disaster a thermal management system of the battery is required which is also taken care by the BMS itself. Now we live in the 21st century where safety and comfort are very basic needs in the automotive industry. The system known as the auxiliary system is used for this purpose which works on 12 volt DC. Hence to power these auxiliary systems the DC to DC converter is used. It steps down the higher voltage of battery pack into 12 volts. This auxiliary system is also part of the normal petrol engine vehicles which are powered by the alternator. In these auxiliary systems there comes the vehicle control unit also known as electronic control unit which monitors all the system which we have discussed right now present in the powertrain. Basically it acts as a brain of the whole vehicle and helps to diagnose the problem to improve overall vehicle security. Next is the body control module BCM which takes care of the basic needs of vehicle such as electronic windows, sound system, air conditioning system, external and internal lights, airbags and ABS control etc etc etc. Now throughout this whole video we haven't seen anything beside the conversion of energy. And that's how the whole power trend of an electric vehicle works. To give you a quick summary, the conversion of AC to DC is being done to store the energy in the battery. And conversion from DC to AC again has been done to drive the motors. To understand the power train of electric vehicles, the understanding of power electronic devices and system is very important. Hence, we need to understand what is inside these systems and how do they work, how are they being controlled and things like that. We'll look into each and every system present in the electric vehicle one by one including BMS and auxiliary systems as well. I hope you have got a broad idea of the working of electric vehicles and system present inside. Stay tuned for more knowledge regarding the EVs. If you like this video, hit the like button, comment down if you have any queries, subscribe to my channel and finally, thanks for watching.